Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create this popping effect inside Cinema 4D. It's a quick and easy one, so let's get into it. All right, so to start off in your scene, you want to make sure that you have a bunch of different 3D objects that you can use with a little bit of variation between them. In my scene, I'm going to be using a bunch of different Lego heads. You can use pretty much anything you want. Though, if you decide you want your scene to look exactly like mine, you can head to my Gumroad page and along with a bunch of other stuff, I have a 3D Lego head pack, which has both free and paid options. So once we have some 3D objects in our scene, we want to start by putting them into a cloner. And you can do this by going into MoGraph and clicking cloner, or you can type shift C to bring up the search option. And in here we can just type cloner. And there we go. Now we're just going to put these into the cloner object. Now you might notice as soon as you've done that, they're really spread apart. So we need to fix that. And in order to fix this, we're going to go into the cloner and under the size, we're going to change the parameters. So let's start with maybe 30. Maybe we could take it to 25. That's not too bad. We'll do the same for this one. Just look at how this is looking. Now we do want them close together, but we don't want them intersecting. I think this is looking good. Just for the sake of it looking good, I might add another one here and give it 25 as well. Maybe a little bit more. Perfect. So now that we have these all kind of close together and we're happy with how it's looking, we want to add some variation. And in order to do that, we're going to grab a MoGraph random effector, which is just here. Or again, you can type in random effector. Now that didn't seem to do much. So we want to make sure that this is affecting our cloner. If it's not doing that, we go into our cloner effectors and add the random effector to it. Now this has kind of pushed everything everywhere. Now the problem with how this looks is it's added some variation to the position instead of the rotation. So we're going to change this off, turn on rotation and start messing with the parameters here. Just until the Lego heads have some variation between them. Next up, we want to add a rigid body dynamics tag to our cloner which you can do by right clicking and going into bullet tags, rigid body. Now, once you've added this tag, if you go ahead and hit play, you're gonna find that they fall immediately to the floor, which is not what we want. Now, in order to fix this, we're gonna use the shortcut Control D to bring up our project settings. We'll go under simulation, make sure you're in scene and where it says gravity, we just wanna turn this to zero. Try again and it's still doing the same thing. So we have one more step to take, which is to go into the dynamics tag again. And under force, we want to add a follow position and follow rotation of 10. And now if we go ahead and hit play once more, you're going to find that these are now floating, which is exactly what we were after. So how do we get the popping effect? Now the popping effect itself is done within the cloner object. If we just hit play here and start changing the count, every single time you are changing these numbers, they're spawning more objects. And if it isn't obvious to you so far, in order to get this effect, we're slowly gonna keyframe these numbers to go up so we get our popping effect. So we're just gonna to go to the start of our timeline and we're gonna start creating some animation. To do that, I'm gonna start by turning the count to one, one, one. So we just have one single object on the screen to start with. I'm gonna create a keyframe by clicking this button here. And now to evenly space this out, we're gonna do it in 20 frame increments. So we're gonna to go to frame 20 and we're gonna change this to two and two, create a keyframe, go to frame 40, change this to two, three, create another keyframe, frame 60, and we'll try two, four and two, another keyframe. And we're just gonna keep doing this going forward. Now we'll try three, four, two, another 20 frames and finish it with three, four, three. Now, if we go to the start of our timeline and just click play, this is the effect that we have. And I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. Now, these numbers that I've used inside the cloner aren't exact. You can use as much as you want. You can go as crazy with this effect as you like. I decided not to go too crazy with it, but you can do what you like. Now, as I mentioned before, this effect can be done with any object you like. So I'm just going to hide these ones for now. And we'll start by putting in some primitives. So I'll add a cube, cylinder, sphere, platonic, maybe even a torus and a oil tank. Make these a little bit smaller so it doesn't go too crazy. I'll just click and drag these into the cloner. Now, if I hit play, these are all bouncing together as well. Now the opportunity for you to use these in your client projects is pretty much endless. And despite it being such a quick and simple effect to do, you might find that it really impresses your clients. 
I can see this especially being used in something like product renders if you're using like cans of drinks and stuff like that. But I hope you found this video useful and find a way to use this within your own 3D projects. If you feel like connecting with other 3D artists and learning a little bit more from me, you can join the 3D community discord. There's a link down in the description. If I don't see you there, I'll see you next time.